The violent response of security forces to protests sparked by the arrest of National Unity Platform President Robert Chagulanyi on 18th November 2020 resulted in the killing of at least 54 people. In the first public disclosure of what really happened, the Justice Minister Norbert Mao says the government responded by removing Major General Sabit Muzei from the position of Deputy Inspector General of Police. I, I think you know that he was at the forefront of those operations. So you are, you are, if you are a subject of disciplinary procedure, it is based on your decision-making power. So if you make the right decision, you are rewarded. If you make the wrong decision, then you are subjected to discipline. Mao adds that the security forces earlier intercepted communication from the West to one of the presidential candidates in which the said candidate was urged by the person to have the masses power on the streets to trigger killings by the security forces. If the Ugandan intelligence picks up a phone call from a so-called international partner, a regime change fundamentalist from Europe calling a leading opposition leader in the heat of presidential campaigns and says, you know what, in order to achieve our objective of removing the dictator, please, Bring thousands and thousands of your supporters to the streets. And if the security forces are provoked enough, if at least 500 of them can be killed, then the international community will have a basis to declare that they should invoke the right to protect. So now, now that kind of uh, information, only the state gets it. The president of the law society does not get it. Sabit was appointed by the president, the general manager Luero Industries, a business arm of the Uganda People's Defense Forces National Enterprise Corporation. Justice is here to be delivered to the victims, some of whom President Yuri Museveni had in the aftermath said they were innocent. Now Mao says receiving the help may require the families to approach the government. The victims have families. I don't think they should put their faith in the political parties that are pretending to be speaking for them. I think they need to organize themselves and demand. The people like uh, Sewanyana's parents did not work through a political party to come to me. Segirinya's mother did not work through a political party to come to me. She came directly. So I believe that these families also need to exercise that level of vigilance. What the president has done is simply to declare that the door is open. In response, the executive director of the Foundation for Human Rights Initiative, Dr. Livingston Sewanyana, agrees that the families of those missing since 2021 may need to reach out to government in order to receive justice. I think as a matter of principle, the families need to be determined who are the families we are talking about. Two, for you to enjoy a right you make and lay a claim, they must lay claims. But Uganda Law Society President Bernard Owundo disagrees with the notion of families of the disappeared pleading with the government on the matter. The government must take the initiative. They know who was killed. They must take the initiative. That is the good, that, 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 that is the better way to do it. They should take the initiative because the government has accepted. And they are saying that yes, we know that some people were unlawfully killed. If you know that they were unlawfully killed, then you should take the initiative to find these people and compensate them. The assertions on this matter came about during the launch of the Uganda Law Society State of the Rule of Law Third Quarter Report for 2023. It informed discussions on the critical role of security agencies in the fight for human rights in the face of increased cases of disappearances that have led the opposition to boycott parliamentary sittings. Jackson Onyango, NTV, Kampala. Uh, Honorable Minister, just to let you know, I'm not